This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Candy Crowley in Washington. Reliable Sources is just ahead, but first, a breaking story we're following. Two star high school football players in Steubenville, Ohio, have been found guilty of raping a West Virginia teenager. The story has attracted national attention. The judge just ruled a few moments ago. Listen in. In this case, um, you know, um, regarding the charges of rape, both defendants, Malik Richmond and Trenton Mays, are committed to the Department of Youth Services for a minimum period of one year, a maximum period till you're 21. Again, this case was played out in juvenile court. That is why there is a judge, no jury. He decided on the verdict, as well as you heard there uh, talking about the sentence. We want to go now to CNN's Poppy Harlow. She is in Steubenville, has been covering this trial. I cannot imagine, having just watched this on the feed coming in, uh, how emotional that must have been sitting in the courtroom. I've never experienced anything like it, Candy. Um, it was incredibly emotional, incredibly difficult, even for an outsider like me, to watch what happened as these two young men that had such promising futures, star football players, very good students, literally watched as, as they believed their life fell apart. One of, one of the young men, Malik Richmond, when that sentence came down, he collapsed. He collapsed in the arms of his attorney, Walter Madison. He said to him, my life is over. No one is going to want me now. Very serious crime here. Both found guilty of raping this 16-year-old girl at a series of parties back in August. Alcohol-fueled parties. Alcohol, a huge part in this. But Trent Mays was also found guilty on a second count, and that is of felony illegal use of a minor in nudity-oriented material because he took a photograph of the victim laying naked on the floor that night. Trent Mays will serve two years in a juvenile detention facility. Uh, Malik Richmond will serve one year on that one count that he was found guilty for. But I want to let our viewers listen because for the first time in this entire trial, we have now heard from the two young men. Trent Mays stood up apologizing to the victim's family in court after him, Malik Richmond. Listen. Sir. I would truly like to apologize to our family, my family, and the community. No picture should have been sent around, but it only be taken. That's awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Anything you'd like to say? Malik? I would like to apologize to you people. I had no intention to do anything like that. I'm sorry to put you guys through this. That just like. <laughs> I was sitting about three feet from Malik when he gave that statement. It was very difficult to watch. Um, and, and you know, something that came up throughout this sentencing, Candy, was that Malik's father got up and, 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 and spoke. Malik has been living with guardians. His father, a former alcoholic, gotten into a lot of trouble with the law, been in prison before. And his father stood up and he told the court, I feel responsible for this. I feel like I wasn't there for my son. And before that, he came over to the bench where his son was sitting. He approached him, he hugged him, and he whispered in his ear. And Malik's attorney said to us in the courtroom, I have never heard Malik's father before say, I love you. He's never told his son that, but he just did today. This was an incredibly emotional day. These two uh, juveniles being carried out right now, I'm, I'm watching people line up, and they will be committed today. Candy. Uh, Poppy Harlow in Steubenville, Ohio for us. I want to bring in Paul Callen, Callen our CNN legal contributor. You know, Paul, a 16-year-old now just sobbing in court, uh, regardless of what big football players they are, they still sound like 16-year-olds. Uh, the other one, 17, a 16-year-old victim. The, the thing is, when you listen to it and you realize that they could stay until they're 21, they are going to get credit for time served. What's the lasting effect, though, on two young men being found guilty in juvenile court of rape, essentially? 
Well, you know, Candy, we've seen here a courtroom drenched in tears and, and tragedy. And, uh, you know, Poppy's description, I think, uh, you know, sums it all up. But across America, scenes like this happen all the time. I know as a prosecutor and a defense attorney, when that verdict is handed down, usually it's just the family, families of the defendants and the victims. Um, there's always that moment of just lives are destroyed. Uh, and lives have already been destroyed by the crime. And we got a chance to, to see that. But in terms of what happens now, yeah, the, the most severe thing with these young men is being uh, labeled as registered sex offenders. That label is now placed on them by Ohio law. And by the way, the laws in most other states now require such a designation in the face of such a serious crime. That will haunt them for the rest of their lives. Uh, employers, uh, when looking up their background, will see that they're registered sex offenders. When they move into a new neighborhood and somebody goes on the internet where these things are posted, uh, neighbors will know that they're a registered sex offender. Um, it's really uh, something that will have a lasting impact, much more of a lasting impact than going to a juvenile uh, facility for one or two years.